man. Nobody misses like this, man. It's crazy. Welcome back, everybody. Backlash Radio. It's Anthony Pino from Hook Optics. Uh, Nick's fishing. Hopefully, he'll be able to. Apparently, they just started tailing right as right as the sun went down. So, uh, hopefully, we'll he'll he'll hop on. He'll hop on tonight. We got Mark Decavia. Um, uh, great great buddy of mine now after a couple of years and a great buddy of Nick's and incredible fisherman from uh the New York area commercial and recreational um yeah man just happy to have you Mark I think I think a lot of the listeners that listen to the old pod know who you are so well thank you for having me back and uh it's uh if anyone's actually viewing you can actually see my boat in the background yeah. you know, okay. I'm here in nice. Stewart at least I got at least I've got eyes on it all the time. I came home yeah. for the holidays here and uh, I flew home for a week or so. And we just, uh, I usually have my marina party at my house. So we just finished that up this weekend. We were trying to do a pod and I had 120 people over at my house this weekend. So that was a complete debauchery. But uh, I always pay it back. We do a big to toy drive for kids. And, you know, it's uh, one thing I was always taught, I always pay it forward. and. You know, I had a lot of good teachers in fishing and they all, uh, they always said, just always pay it back. So any way you could pay it back, doesn't matter what you do. We always helping somebody or doing something is, it's a big part of all of sport fishing, this whole entire network, because you never know who you're going to need or when you're going to need them. Yeah, so. Is, is your party a big event? You know, cause I've, I've learned that like, you know, if there's like, we had the Marlin club in ocean city and like, in the off season, like to get everybody together, you know, with people traveling and everything, you, is that, is that like a big thing for everybody? It's a you know? pretty, it's pretty funny. That I look at back at it now because a lot of people are like, Oh, you got invited to Mark's house. Not a lot of people. Yeah. And I invite, you know, I bet there's about, there's two different parties. So we have a party on Saturday night. It's uh, anyone who basically helps me along the way, fishing related, non-fishing related. They all come to my house. I have fully catered, fully taken care of, uh, as many high nudes as you could possibly drink <laughs> and, uh, and champagne. And then we have an event the next day, uh, after a ripping hangover, usually it's called the party after the party where anyone who has a kid, uh, being I'm from New York, everyone's got to have an uncle Al, yeah. uncle Al comes over dressed up as Santa. And if you have kids, uh, Santa's over and, you know, bring your kids over and we have, you know, breakfast sandwiches and, the leftover food because you know i'm italian and we got to have 88 trays of food so it takes two full days to get rid of the the first a lot oh, yeah. and food. i mean if and, you yeah you know and you anyone who could just tell listening on this pod from my accent you know being from new york there's definitely a lot of red sauce being served um so we have a red couple sauce is the only sauce dude oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> and, and uh there's uh a lot of good red wine drank and a lot of good fish stories told and a lot of good fish stories untold and who who doesn't like who and you know obviously <laughs> we all doesn't get we we all get along offshore and then we you know a couple you know 10 12 high noons later everyone some true serum comes out who doesn't like who <laughs> who cut off who who sandbagged each other you know and it, it always comes up but uh we do a big toy drive the second day we donated uh giant box of toys to some underprivileged kids which you know is is great and uh but it gets everyone together this time of year and something we all enjoy doing and you know we get to talk about fishing the year before how you know how good it was how bad it was how much boats yeah. suck you know oh, uh, buddy yeah boats uh they they suck you know they're, they're the best and the worst you know and, um besides you know for people first time listening you know i'm a full-time commercial fisherman and i'm a full-time private boat captain so my time is spread pretty thin uh and i can tell you always when it rains it pours when one thing breaks on one boat i could tell you it's most likely going to break on the other two or three boats that i have yeah so um it uh it never it never ends and that's part of my party because i need everyone in my network just to reach out and you know, you got to have a good electronics guy. You got to have a good glass guy. You got to have the, the, you know, someone is always going to help you. Yeah. Just like we say, commercial fishing, you're always going to be on one end of the tow rope. Yeah, so for sure. you being the guy towing 
or the guy getting towed. And if you don't think you're going to get towed, you're, you're definitely, you're definitely wrong. No, so. it's always going to happen. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes like, like you said, when it rains, it pours, you can go years and years and like have like, you know, maintain your boat properly and it all be working, working great. And then, you know, one, one year for whatever reason, it all starts to, to, to come apart. And it's just like, a, it's not a nightmare. It's just part of the job. Like sometimes it's nightmares, but actually you, you've had your, your share of nightmares and I, well, maybe we'll get into that a little later. Yeah. But, uh, um, I mean, that's fishing. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a big part of, of doing this, you know, and it's, it's not about, you can't panic. You just, you know, take a deep breath and you figure it out. You know, you just, you, you know, you got to just not lose your composure or not. It, it's hard. Uh, I'll tell you this. Like I, you know, we all probably are, we're all cut from the same thing. That's why we all do this. But I can tell you a lot of us lose sleep and you're thinking about parts and how we're going to fix that tomorrow. Even though you come home and you collapse, you know, you barely hit your head hits the pillow, you're sleeping and then you're up at one in the morning trying to figure out what to do and, and how do we fix it but you know advice for you know oftentimes i get asked the question of you know how do you deal with it i said the best advice you can give someone starting out is uh you got to be a solutions guy you can't be a problem guy you can't be panicking you have to have a solution there's always a i always try to i always try to call my boss with a problem that's happened or is happening and ideally already have the solution to just be like hey we just need this money you know, yeah. <laughs> you know it's already, I'm usually it's the already same taken way. care of <laughs> i'm usually the same way of uh you know i i tell them the problem i've already solved it with a solution yeah. and this is this is when and, oh, okay and, or how come you didn't tell me about that because there's no need to tell you about that i'm a solutions guy and you know i'm gonna figure it out you know yeah. it's it sucks. You know, there's nothing you can do about it sometimes. And um, I mean, I had a, a, a birthday party thrown for me, a surprise party. And I was out commercial fishing and I blew my turbo. And I remember I showed up for my own birthday, a surprise birthday, eight and a half hours late. So you could tell the, uh, you know, and I, I kind of knew something was up when everyone's like, where are you? Where are you? I'm like, well, I won't be at the dock till 9 PM. And that's part <laughs> of it. It's, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's sometimes, you know, anyone plays cards, you know, this, you, sometimes you catch the card on the river or catching a big fish or catching a, a tournament winner at 350, you know, 329. And sometimes, you know, you could catch the card the other way, yeah. you know, everything's going right. Everything's going good. And then you, you blow something up and, and everything breaks you know every fucking thing on the boat breaks from a pump to the boats, motor man. to yeah. it's just the boat and it's just an agonizing experience sometimes and then sometimes like you said it just goes right you know and then you're like oh everything's going good but i'm sure we all you know like i said think the same be like what you know what the fuck's gonna happen next you know so and 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 you know it's coming yeah so yeah. you know you know so and uh that's it but you know i hope nick gets to jump on you know, yeah dude nick, nick and i have known each other a long time and and uh you know hopefully he actually caught him today so he'll, he'll gain his sanity back you know yeah and, at least the, the wind's the, wind is blowing the right way here so it should be tailing it was rough enough it was plenty rough up here in new york yesterday blew southeast 60 and, yeah and uh uh, the water was just as high as Hurricane Sandy in a lot of spots out here. A lot of places got flooded out. And yeah. Hopefully none of the listeners got too much damage up here in the Northeast, but you know, it was a real, real good one. Yeah. That was, we, we were kind of here in, in Stewart while that thing was developing and it was just, it, it was East wind for like, like four days. And then the rain came and it was 40 for two nights. I felt like it was 40 knots and like, just in a, or an amount of rain that I'd never really yeah. seen. Maybe it's because I was sleeping on in, in a boat in the front stateroom under the bow deck, and it, it it in a new boat, and I just feel like it it's not quite as 
it's quite a bit louder on this boat than, than my old boat. Well, you hear all the different so noises. Yeah. yeah, when you when you hear different, of like, what is that? Or when the yeah. pump kicks on, like, what is that pump? Yeah. You know, and, and what's so. going to happen next? And, you know, and then you get up and you're walking around because you can't sleep right. And you're like, oh, all right, you know. Or you I'll walk into the, like, the my biggest thing with the door, the button door is that the, the button's on the other side. Both, both going in and out so i'm like oh, i keep that's on good. reaching for the wrong button so <laughs> that's gonna so, that's gonna drive you away go you know yeah i'm trying to like, this, where's the button speaking of buttons this boat doesn't have nearly the buttons that i had on the uh on the case and so i'm super happy to have a little bit more s s simple of a so. yeah but um man i really wanted to have you on because of, you know i keep on been threatening for two years uh two or three years to go up there and, and fish next to you you know in 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 june or july you know july seems to be the best seems to be the most epic fishing when it comes to the canyon fishing for you and i, I wanted to you know since we're both guys that 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 are addicted to looking at the water shots and making it you know trying to understand it i, I wanted to talk to you about you know the fishing you guys have had specifically more more canyon oriented but overall just in general too but the yeah. fishing you guys have had june june through what september October? i mean this year now yeah. it's 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 november now our fishing is just extending and we're just having different fisheries and uh you know it, it's just a whole new game for what probably both of us grew up doing you know and i mean i worked on a very i worked on the canyon runner a good portion of my life and a very successful boat and none of the fishing that they're doing now is anything that I even did when I was there. It's a totally yeah. different fishery. And, but also our fishery has changed, I would say 180 degrees. Uh, we used to be, you know, have at least three to five major eddies a summer. Now we're having one or two at best the last three years, which is definitely, I mean, it's a positive for my area, but it's a negative for everywhere else on the planet i would say basically basically north of cape hatteras and between the hudson canyon and cape hatteras is we you know that eddy is has stayed east east of the hudson out towards hydrographers and beaches and stuff like that for two two three years in a row now three, three years like i never had to go to beach and that's all it seems like we're we're living in beach and it's uh it, it's beach to west atlantis and the fishing barely gets going even in the Hudson anymore. We used to, I used to live in the Hudson, yeah. but you know, we get these, uh, we get these massive eddies and now they start in May and, and everything gets rolling in May. And, and, and it's like, you watch them and, and it just, everything's jammed up in the one, um, mm -hmm. you know, one of the first trips I did, I caught two blues in an afternoon without even trying. They were yeah. just piling on tuna stuff, you know? And, uh, since there's not a lot of boats fishing out by us, you know, I'm sure you could just sit there and, and catch plenty of them. You know, I'm trying to catch a couple of a little bit of everything. I'm not trying to say I'm just directly targeting tunas anymore, but it's uh, there's plenty of fish. But also our, the food has changed dramatically. We have massive abundance of sand eels. We have bunkers. We have the amount of food that's inshore has changed our canyon fishing into this crazy inshore fishing. That why all... why do you why do you feel like the there's an abundance of bait because we don't we don't have that down here anymore. Do you think it has to do with with the it's more ideal of a temperature for for bunker and, and sand eels well, there uh, and less here now? You had a couple of things, so, you know. And I'm a full time commercial fisherman, and I could I could tell you this: when they slow down, I wouldn't say they stopped the Omega, the bunker boats. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't take long for a bunker to reproduce. They only live, you know, 16, 17 months. And if anyone remembers the video game Lemmings, you know, they just reproduce and that's it. And it's just when there's a million, there's two million, then there's four million, then there's 16 million. Uh, I think you slowed it down. And now there's this massive influx of bunkers. And then at the same time, the temperature's right. And you have these huge algae blooms. The bunkers eat the algae, then the whales come. I, I never saw whales as a kid. And now you just drive to the top of my inlet. We have an overlook, just like you guys, you know, have by the first. And you see on any given day, 20 to 30 whales spouting yeah. up 
finbacks, you know, humpbacks, every, you know, say whale, any different type of whale. And you have all these guys with the drones. Uh, there's a few guys on Instagram that we just watched. Yeah, I was watching some videos earlier. Yeah, this year. there's yeah. They're unbelievable drone footage of the whales that they're right up on the backside of the surf. And I know that right. from, uh, you know, I'm a commercial fisherman. I'm a gill netter as well. And, you know, the amount of fish that we have is, is almost too much. You know, it's, yeah. um, and it's, you know, I don't want to talk too much about commercial fishing, but the fish come in and they're too plentiful. And it's, everyone's like, oh, who, you know, they're plentiful, but that doesn't do me any good because we catch too many at once and the price isn't worth anything. Yeah, yeah. They the price to zero. And then you're, I'm just working for nothing. I'd rather at least, you know, sell my fish and get paid for them. For sure. Uh, so with the bunkers and the sand eels, then the last three years, because we've only had one or two eddies, there's been no ill-ex squid offshore. We had the most ill-ex squid ever in the history of man in 2018 uh where the draggers did insane and i i'm very good friends with all the dragger guys the offshore boats and you know they were having some days 500,000 pound days half a million pound toes i mean that's a mass amount of illex and then you know it's not that they killed them all just the breeding stock slowed down in the last three years we haven't had any illex squid offshore which is hurt my fishing your fishing and off of oceans if there's no squid the you know the whites don't come to the bank the blues don't come up the swords stay offshore as well they stay where the food is yeah. so when there's no food in the canyon walls <laughs> especially the tunas because the tunas have optimal temperature they come in shore and tunas most people don't know this but everyone thinks tunas are 100 fathom fish most tunas that are caught in the world are within 30 to 40 fathoms, no matter where yeah. you go on the planet. Uh, like blue fins, I get the most optimal depth for a blue fin is 35 fathoms. Anywhere the whole edge from Stellwagen Bank up to the Gulf of Maine through New York is that's the best depth, no matter where you are. And I fished on George's the few years that we had the really good fishing out there. And that's, you know, well, probably one of the best areas. So now you got the food and you got the fish, you got the whales. It's just a big, uh, pad diagram of of success and it's i think it's it's helped our industry uh the guy taking out his kids you know to yeah. you know the summer console guy which is good you know but it's also now created a you know a different uh you know we have a lot more qualified individuals running boats <laughs> which is uh i could you know there's unfortunately there's a few mishaps each summer and uh you know, and up by me, there's fog and there's a lot of uh, disasters. But, you know, I would say an idiot dipped in moron could catch a tuna now. You know, yeah. any given day, I mean, it's it's insane. I mean, I'm not, I don't like saying fish and stupid, but it, you could just have your choice when you leave the inlet. What do you want to go do and where do you want to go? Do you only want to go 12 miles, 10 miles, 25 miles, you know, and you can go catch a bunch of fish. But yeah. It's almost to the point now where technology up here is just far exceed efficient. And with yeah. the fish right there, everything is jammed up in one spot and they're just very easy to catch. Yeah. Do you think that the bluefin population is, you know, it's, it's, we're catching tunas here and they've always been kind of a, a, a myth this time of year, not here, but in Ocean City. They, they've always been kind of a myth that you couldn't catch them because they were moving through or, or like they would, people would see them and they'd be kind of there again, gone to Mar. I mean, that pop and I saw them out there in a thousand fathoms this summer and we just got meleeed by them. That was yeah. incredible. There was acres, like a couple acres of, of, of two of giants. And I, I've never seen that before, you know, and you're just in a random spot. Think yeah, about I, in miles 80, away. There might be another yeah. herd or, you know, I think besides the, the spiny dogfish that has played, the whole New England, I think the bluefins are probably the second best success story that National Marine Fisheries has done. Or, yeah. you know, but it's not obviously our, it's, you know, obviously, you know, preservation. And, um, but, you know, I could tell you that there's definitely, there's a lot of giant tuners around and there's a lot of uh, mediums, which is basically anything above a 47 or a 50 inch 
but I could tell you there is a lack of smaller ones right now. You know, we didn't see the smaller ones um, too much. We saw mostly a 50 to 58 inch bluefin, which is, you know, 65 to 90 pounds, which is a very nice fish. Um, and I'm always looking forward. I'm like, oh, well, where are the little ones? You know, there were some little ones up north, but, and obviously a lot of giants, but when the giants basically die or we, we kill them all, you know, cause we're all very good at what we do now. Um, you know, what's, what's next on the, on the table. So, and blue Did fins you, come back year after year, not like a yellow fin. So mm -hmm. uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're close. They're, you know, blue fin can go wherever it wants, but there's, there's, it's known that they will migrate coastal more like a, more like a, like a, a deeper, deeper living striped bass or bluefish or something like that. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's shown by our tagging data. Uh, yeah. The guys that tag them on, there was a, a couple of good things on recently that they were tagged on Stellwagen and they returned 10 years later and yeah. caught 30, 40 miles away from where it was tagged. I mean, so it, it proves their, our stock assessments or stock tracking is correct. Um, and, you know, but you always got to look forward, you know, of, uh, you know, of everything. It's same thing. You know, there was a lot of white Marlins around and then look at them all off Nantucket, you know, you know, they just happen. I mean, they've been there from the dawn of time. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. But the, you, but, you know, that, I think that with that, ed, that big Eddie out there that, that you guys have had, and it just, it just scoops just them all pumps up them right then, in there. And then when they, you know, when they, they just kind of find their way in shore, finding the bait, you know, so it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, and it's, it's locked down here because of that. We see a lot more blues and sales now than we ever have because we have the Gulf Stream, you know, years ago. So I think we should go back and ex explain a little bit about what we're talking about in the areas that we fish. We, we don't. When, when we're specifically talking about offshore canyon fishing as you guys like to say up there you know we we look at it i look at it from cape hatteras to nantucket as as what i try to study um going into the season right and we speak the same language even though we don't fish anywhere near each other as far as the the, the coast goes we still speak the same language because we still we still fish the same features uh up there as as i do as we do in ocean city and i think what we, we should explain to people is that there's two major cur currents that that perpetuate the the what you would say the mid-atlantic and the north atlantic region which is basically what i consider cape hatteras cape or the northeast cape hatteras to nantucket and there's the the southern gulf stream that comes up from the south and then there's the labrador current that comes from the north and what what Mark and I and the people that basically fish from Nantucket down to Virginia Beach or even Oregon Inlet, what they what we fish are these not the Gulf Stream itself and not the Labrador Current itself, but the areas where they mix and these eddies that are created by these big winter storms like we just had. And they and they start to spin counterclockwise, and if there's a couple of them and the conditions are right, and you get a couple. Of, of east blows they will get up basically on the 100 fathom line more or less sometimes deeper sometimes shallower and they will literally roll like a wheel down from nantucket all the way down to off just of like North a hurricane yeah just, just like yeah. a hurricane and just it'll like go a hurricane down. follows weather they just roll on the 100 fathom curve and the 100 fathom curve is where all the food is it's the most you know where most of the squid are and the plankton and, and you have upwelling and, and glacial deposits and bottom structure. And it's all one big, you know, uh, family tree of, of stuff that moves on down. And then, you know, you have the little fish and eat the big fish and then everything attracts everything else. But uh, where, you know, some people want to know is, you know, do we spend a lot of time, you know, if you want to catch your blue marlins or your white marlins, you go fish in the clean water and offshore. You want to catch your tunas and your mixed stuff, you go fish on the blend. Um, and people are always afraid. They, well, I see boats run past me all the time. You know, I'm fishing in the cold water. You know, I have mm. don't everything, food lives in the cold water. You know, all the food is generally on the cold side of the break, meaning the breaks go from 
Sometimes 65 to 75 yeah. degrees. I mean, you have insane stuff up there. Yeah, we have fog sometimes when they're so... <laughs> Uh, we have fog and then there's actually different weather patterns. You're in the cold water and it's two to three foot, uh, especially in June. And you get in the hot water and it's blowing southwest 25 to 30 yeah. and double overhead, you know, and, and it's hard enough to troll and you got ripping current. And, you know, you'll go through this fog bank. Then it's just like this uh, blue lagoon majestic area that you see, you know, sargassum and so much weed that you can't even troll, you know, anything yeah. out there. Um, so it's a, a totally different fishery and, but when it lines up at any given point, you could probably catch five or six different species of fish in, in a couple hours yeah. uh, without even trying, you know, without really, you know, if you think about how much time we actually put in out there for what we're, what we're catching is pretty good. You know, most of the time, I mean, you think about, you're only trolling some days from, first light to two or three in the afternoon and you catch a handful of tunas some eyes a blue marlin a white marlin and maybe a sore daytime and that's you're being pretty effective at what you're doing yeah uh, but we're all not marked to cavia so this the the, the the that day that you just rattled off like it's a normal day is not not always like that <laughs> yeah but you got to be positive i'm gonna tell you this the, the biggest thing i can tell you in sport fishing no one's positive I tell you what, oh my god! I mean, I, 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 I thought that was an Ocean City thing, where just this "woe is me," oh, like, oh man, it can't be. It, this is like we're every like Ocean City. We're super fortunate. We get the we have a lot a big fleet of high quality sport fishers, and it just seems like we we might as well be paddling out there in kayaks if you hear some of us talk someday. And I am I am sometimes leading that pack, dude. I I I, I do my best to maintain positivity, but you're always gonna get them. That's it. You're always going to get, if you're going to be negative, just, just get off, you know, you know, and I'll be the first guy. I throw my temper tantrums on the boat. I'm a fucking complete psycho. You know, <laughs> that's why Nick and I have always got along. We're fucking completely out of our minds. You know, I mean, I'm not, some days they know when I'm not speaking and I just throw my hands up. That's 10 times worse than me screaming. Yeah. That means I'm just going to completely unglued. I'm just going to snap the scrub brush over someone. Just stay out of my way. And, and you know we'll be fine you know when i start launching myself up and down the tower you know throwing <laughs> things you, you know like uh i can tell you you know we have uh, headsets on a boat i don't i don't think i need a headset you don't need it. <laughs> uh, no i'm pretty you know my boss is like oh let's get the headsets i'm like i don't think you're gonna need me to you know scream you know what's going on i think you're gonna know what's happening at all points yeah uh, but I'm a lot talking to myself in the headset and things that I used to that nobody used to hear over the C32s now people hear. You know, yeah. <laughs> we all we all talk to ourselves. I can tell you that we're always like second guessing ourselves and and what we're doing and where we're going and you look, out, you know, look oh, over and you're like him again. Yeah. Catching oh yeah. Another one? <laughs> are you are you kidding me? You know, and that's what I I always say. Are you kidding me? You know, like it, this is really going to happen to me today. You know, and some days I can tell you, everyone, you know, everyone has their day and you can't, you can't prevent that. You know, yeah. that's, that's what's going to happen. There's, there's always a, someone better. There's always, you know, something that's going to go wrong your way. And then some days it just goes right. Everything goes right. The mood is right. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's the morale. And I'm sure, you know, you can tell us like the first fish of the day determines everything i oh, can yeah. tell you you know uh, what do you I, think is better when you get the bite like right out the gate and you and you fuck them off or when you get the bite right out the gate like and and you like catch them but that's the only like i don't know i've had days where like right out the gate setting this like clipping the last flat line down we raise a triple and we we miss them and i'm like oh my god yeah and uh, so so do you prefer that or just, just like I guess you always, for me, I've always preferred to have the bite, but like, instead of like, maybe may, wait an hour or two, go searching and, and then see the first fish. No, like. I, I have like, I'm not super, uh, I'm a little superstitious, yeah. but usually right out of the gate, you get a bite. Like, like this year I, I was putting like a, a, a seven strand tuna clone, which is like 
the one of the cheapest lures you could possibly buy, but a very effective lure in the Northeast. And I remember I came out of the cabin with it and we're just setting out and I'm like, you know what? I'm putting this out. Like it's just a gut feeling. I put it in the rigger and I mean, I'll scream at the guys for doing this, but normally you watch when you set out. I'm putting it up in the clip and the thing gets ripped out of my hand. And I'm like, you know, normally I'd be the guy upstairs, but like moron, turn around. That's why when you put yeah. something in the clip, it's second nature and you're setting back. And we caught a yellow fin in the first 23 seconds of fishing. Yeah. Um, and that's one, one way. Always, this is in the Northeast, you know, we don't catch a lot of uh, like gaffer dolphin and stuff like that. Most of the dolphin we have, I would say north, you know, north of the Hudson are three, between three and 10 pounds. So catching a gaffer is probably, it's, it's a big thing, like a 15, 20 pounder. I'm very superstitious. Some of the three days of best fishing I've ever had in my life, we've caught a gaffer within two to three minutes of fishing. Yeah. And like, okay, we got that one. Check like off a 20, 30 pounder, like a big yeah, one. like a nice one, like you know, between a 15 and a 30 pounder. And I'm like, all right, now you know, I'm like that instills, you know, basically your confidence. And then you're like, oh, it's gonna be like the last day, you know, we're gonna get them. And I can remember all three of those days, you know, and you don't catch too many up in New York. So I'm like, oh man, this is this is gonna be one of those days, you know. And then, you know, a couple of times you can catch absolutely nothing for the last nine hours. Yeah. Um, but that's our canyon fishing. It's hero or zero lately. It's been either as good as it gets um, or it, it's been painfully slow, you yeah. know, painfully. Yeah. Um, and that's unfortunately like what you're probably experiencing more as you, you go down the bank toward you guys, toward Ocean City. Uh, you know, it, it's... You know, I'm sure I, I was, you know, follow Marcus on the Marley quite a bit. And, uh, you know, like you could just tell, like, either they slam them or they catch nothing. Yeah. So it's like a, and the, the, the consistency of the the conditions and the and the amount just because of the of the lack of the influx of, of what we need for good for good fishing is it comes and goes so rapidly because it's a lot of it's coming from the south and we have eddies that those eddies that come off the gulf stream that are not like really eddies they're just like they Slop. just move so they're just they just move so quickly and they're we're so dependent on a, a east southeast blow now you know it, it it's not as it's not as consistent what what you hear today is you know by 10 o'clock it's you know if you don't get it on it on the very next day it's probably going to be over which is kind of crazy that we we talk like that and that's going to be over because years ago we only had a sat phone like i was yeah, talking yeah. to you know when i was when i was running the candy runner like we had a sat phone that was like a big deal i remember my friends calling me like you better get here tomorrow or the yeah. next day you know now with starlink you know what i mean if you don't you know everyone's everything's up to the second you know yeah yeah pretty comical because you don't even hear anyone on the radio anymore. No, you just hear the yeah. people that are, you know, I'm not some center consoles have Starlink, but any big sport boat, party boats, we we all have it. So yeah. it's it's funny because we don't even talk on the radio because we're all just texting each other. You no, know, you and, just get the group chat going. Everybody who went in your direction, you kind of look yeah. around in the morning. You you get the group chat going, and you're 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 golden for the day. You know. Yeah, or whoever's in the. Uh, you know, the Italian circle of trust, you know, <laughs> that's what we say up here. You better be, you want to be in the circle of trust up here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you find out real quick who, who reciprocates and who oh, sand yeah. you and, you know, and, uh, what you tell certain people, what you don't tell certain people. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, even in tournaments and it, it's, I still work together with boats and in, in tournaments, you know? Oh, you have to. Yeah. It, Nothing change. Nothing's gonna change. At first, I was like, "Well, you we can't help him out," but you know what? I'd rather have my friends win than someone else win. You yeah. know, um, and you know, and that, you, you, know it's, you always pay it forward. Like if I see something, be like ah, come take a look at this, or come come do that. You know, obviously, I want to win, but you know, it's you, you know, you're always you're always gonna be on the other end of that at some point. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and 
certain days, you know, we all have our bad days of fishing. I mean, you know, some days you just, you can't get out of your own way. You couldn't catch any, you know, couldn't catch a cold, couldn't catch anything. And then some days you can't miss, you know, so always paying it forward. Like I can't express that uh, enough, you know. How, uh, how many days do you t- typically get, get offshore all, all out to the canyons on the rebel i know you guys fish hard but um, you don't make it all, all all the time out there no like this summer we we started changing up our fishing because we have such good fishing in shore but uh mm-hmm. a general summer we're doing about i would say a dozen at least a dozen to 15 overnighters mm-hmm. so that's 30 days then a, a bunch of day trips and a bunch of uh i would say inshore trips i mean you know, most most summers we're putting in 500 hours on the boat. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. You know, and then the, obviously COVID and those years, those two years. I mean, we did. I remember we did a thousand hour service on the Rebel when I left Florida, and I remember calling Nathan at, at Ace, who's my main man. Yeah, yeah I just uh, seen him today. Yep, yeah, and yeah. Uh, can't can't express uh, my love to Nathan. You know, because he's always there. Him and his brother Jason. Um, at Ace Marine. Uh, and I remember I left. I said, we got to do another thousand hour service when I get back. He's like, you're serious? I go, oh yeah, I'm serious. You know, so uh, having obviously good relationships with all your guys and, you know, working with them. And, and it's, that's just as important. Yeah. Of, uh, you know, you know, in this whole fishing game of, of everything, you know, because there's always something that's going to break or always something you got to fix. And, you know, and being preventative is uh, a big part, but we do a lot. Uh, just like cards, you got to know when to hold them, when to fold them. Yeah. You know, sometimes, super... so, you know, sometimes my boss is pushing me to go and he's, he's like, we got to go. And uh, he's like, don't be, you know, the text chain between me and my mate, you know, if you guys really want to go anymore. No, I, I want to go when I know I could always put it together i don't want to be behind the eight ball i don't want to be chasing something yeah and if you hear about it it's already over well you know you got to go find your own fish um you know uh you know this summer um i uh you know a, a quick recap i mean our offshore fishing was very very slow uh we had tommy paul the uh tennis player on on board and it was the week of the u.s open and he's uh good friend of my boss and uh, my boss's son-in-law. So decided to come on the boat, you know, him and his trainer. And I'm already sweating to begin with because I'm like, great. You know, I got to take a guy fishing who's supposed to be performing in the U.S. Open in three days. Not, hopefully he doesn't get hurt. And yeah. I don't have like a bunch of, you know, 100,000 people going to U.S. Open that want to kill me that the, this guy just got hurt offshore sport fishing. You know, not sleeping the night before. What's the best move? You know, what, what can I go take them to do within two hours of my inlet to go make sure we catch some fish, you know? And I'm like, obviously you want to try as hard as you can. And you're like, you have a celebrity on the boat and, you know, I'm, my head was just spinning. I'm just, remember I told him to get to the boat at three and I'm, I'm at the boat at 1135 (laughs) the night before retying every knot that my mate just tied because I, I, I couldn't, you know, handle the pressure. You know, I want everything perfect. And, you know, we had one of those days that just, you know, you, you couldn't even, it's just a, a Cinderella thing. You know, we sat out and the first six seconds of the day, we were trying to catch bait. We marked a couple of tunas on the bottom. I, you know, I said, let's grab the jig rod. He we grabbed the jig rod, took three swings, and we caught a 72 inch, 200 pound bluefin. Nice. And he got to fight that. So it was, uh, and then we proceeded to catch two or three giant tunas that it, that morning, and we left the dock at three o'clock. And by nine a.m., we already caught seven, eight tunas, and we were on our way to go sea bass, and we were home by lunch. So some days it just works out. I'm very thankful that day worked out for me. Yeah. Um, and then you know could have got. Usually it goes way wrong. I'm sure you've experienced that when you have anyone you're trying to impress, oh, yeah. or even even family members oh you know when you take out like oh yeah let's go and then you know it's uh you know you catch nothing you know at all um so you know and some days you know i remember you had your family out and you know you you railed them you you can't miss so 
you can't miss certain days that then I'll- that 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 day that those two days especially the first day of that overnighter it was i felt like i, I couldn't miss like i was just it wasn't anything that i was doing for sure but I, I just had it going on and it was a mystery some days some days you know i feel like i lock in on something that maybe maybe other people don't but that day i just was like this is just happening you know? yeah, you're just turning you're just driving some days you're just driving you just like yeah. your body you know you just turn left and whoo yeah. there he is like, you know and you there he is on you know on the left chain or you know and you turned right into him even though you didn't even know he was there or yeah you didn't see him on the sonar or you didn't see him on anything and it just it works out yeah that's just uh that's just you know that's fishing most people it works out it works out you know but but making sure you have everything prepped is, uh, you know, in the Northeast, obviously it's a, it's a long winter and I've obviously done seminars and, and stuff my whole life. And I can't express being prepared is, is 99% of what we do up in the Northeast, yeah. you know, having everything rigged and ready and, you know, and this is the time of year to get it all done, you know, fishing, any, any fishing anywhere in the world is a fleeting thing. So that whenever whenever it starts to happen, it every every second or every hour, every day that the fishing's good, it's one more one more second hour or day that it's gonna be over, closer to when it's gonna be over, you know. And oh. I, I I think that sometimes people don't really realize that they're like, Oh, I'll be down next week, or you know, and I you know, we we deal with people that have a, a lot of stuff going on in their pro- professional lives and pro- personal lives, but like and for people that are lunatics like us about this, it's it, it's hard to to wrap your head around the fact that like yeah, it's it's finally going off and we can't make it, you know. But other yeah. people actually have things that are more important than than going out there and catching all the tunas or all the white marlins or blue marlins in the world. We can't understand that, but some people yeah. do. So I I understand I I do eventually understand that, but I think people wonder why certain boats can catch so much more than other boats because they're out there, you know, and some of the boats don't, they don't, they don't always fish hard consistently. They just fish hard when it, when the conditions are right, you know? Yeah. And they, and they go, they go hard the whole entire time, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and being prepared is a, is, is a lot to do with that, that you can, you know, if you're a, a private boat owner that is fishing for fun, just being able to hop on the boat, you know, for us, thaw a couple values and then go fishing because everything else is done is, you know, is is great is is a valuable thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's some, you know, there's certain times like like you're saying that I, one of the one time I thought I was honestly getting fired was uh, one of my first years. My boss came on the boat and I was still in uh, I call it canyon runner mode where we would just go out and kill 25 yellow fins and. I remember we smoked them at night and my boss turned and looked at me at 5.30 in the morning. He goes, don't ever do that ever again. You know? And he was... How, when you say smoked them, how bad was it, Mark gave you? How bad uh, I mean, I think I... I've heard I the story Like before. a dozen... No, like that particular night, like I could have kicked it up a notch, but <laughs> there was blood like, you know, I, I look like a Native American under my eyes. You know, and I'm just screaming at everyone, get them out of my feet. Um, and you know, and you know, we I think we did 25 in an hour and a half, which is yeah. you know, which is pretty good. You know, uh, my my old mate and compadre Mike Zajac on the Canyon Runner, him and I have had some some devastating nights where we went fish for fish. We I think we caught 75, just him and I, chunking at night, and you know, um. And it goes to show you all the fluorocarbon, everything we know, don't matter when they're biting. Oh yeah, you know, you know that's it's funny. Everyone's all stealthy and, and and stuff, and then other times you can put a sardine through the eyes on three hundred pound uh, and catch them. And I tell everyone it's the same thing. You know, I I'm a commercial fisherman. A, a thousand long line hooks can't be wrong every single night <laughs> yeah. on three hundred pound. Okay. And trust me, the guy throwing the bait off the back of the boat, not exactly your uh your rock star mate. You know, there's no precision hooking anything when the beeper, uh, which is when you know we have a beeper or something, you know, in the back of the boat when you set out. Yeah. And 
the captain. So if it's beeping, trust me, he's not making sure that the chin is sewn correctly. I, I can yeah. assure you. So sometimes when they're biting, they're biting. But, uh, you know, that fishing, you know, is, is few, sometimes it's few and far between now. But, um, you know, the program that we mainly target now is, is fewer and, and bigger bites. You know, mm -hmm. my guys, they'd rather catch a big eye, rather catch blue marlins, rather catch, you know, a few whites and a few, everything, I would say, more quality stuff. Than, yeah, than the quantity. big elephants, too, you guys yep. have had up there the last couple of years. Yeah, we've had some Allison, you know, a lot more Allison's the last couple of years because we have Gulfstream water. Uh, and the night fishing is, you don't know what's going to bite at night. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like, uh, you know, there's things that go bump in the night, that childhood, you know, or a childhood book that we all saw, like those creatures. You know, you put a squid down 200, you don't know what's eating that. Yeah. You know? What typically is eating that, though? Manta ray. You know, Manta ray. Manta ray. <laughs> a lot of, lot of swordfish in New York, you know, so, they look cool. That spool yeah. kills, you know, that they never see after eight and a half hours. Uh, you know, there's a lot so of those. Has there been an influx of manta rays? Because we see a lot more manta rays now, but I don't know. It's because we're chasing these marks with the sonar now more so than we, you know, we just didn't cross paths with as many. Because a, a white, a, a manta ray and a white marlin or a blue marlin, it's it's not, it's almost impossible to tell the difference yeah. until you. There get are two boomerangs right on top of each yeah. other, and they're at fifty-two the, feet, and you're like, yeah. oh, there they are, and and that would be a typical white mark or a blue mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I chase them around, but sometimes there's tunas with them, you know? Yeah, no, I'm not saying there's, there's not, but like, oh, do you, well, do you the, think- the do Influx you... of manta rays? Uh, yeah. I think because the last couple of years, we've only had one eddy. Uh-huh. I generally- well, I'm, I'm seeing them down here in the green water, dude. Oh, Like oh, down well, there, yeah. Oh, you know, there's probably so. a lot, you know, there's no, you gotta, you gotta think about a couple different things. There's one- Tenth the amount of long liners as used to be. Not saying yeah. anything that they magically disappeared. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, you know, there's no, there, they have no predators. You know, what's eating a manta ray? What's eating one of those two thousand pound rays? Nothing. They're just going to reproduce, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they reproduce in the same water, and they all like the same conditions. You know, they all love yeah. the same bait, and and the same as goes for the hammerheads. Same mm -hmm. goes for the sharks. You know, everyone's like, oh, there's sharks off Oregon Inlet. Now, off Ocean City, you guys can't even troll anymore. It's like, yeah, you know, and I, and I you know, I, I did a lot of shark fishing growing up. Like, and trust me, there's a lot of sharks around. Yeah. You know, there's there's plenty. And like, unfortunately, that's going to have to change soon, you know, too. You know, we we'll have to go back to, to kind of slow them down a little bit, you yeah, know, because it's just, you see the northern push it's mm -hmm. you know it doesn't make a genius figure this out like oh you guys have slow fishing and sharks and and when the fish do show oh, up dude, they get bowed down the sharks Why would anything even swim there you yeah. know that doesn't make any sense they follow yeah. they i don't i think they just naturally follow the tunas around but man when you hook up like i've marked like I, I can mark them and feel like that's a school of tunas and then Below right and behind them is a school of sharks. Like it, yeah. it, it's, and you can tell the difference in the mark. And as soon as you get covered up, it's, it's yeah. game on. It's either you get you're you're gonna sacrifice a couple. Yeah, it's no. probably it's like a Pac Man. Game. Yeah, I you know, I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have issues so much with the warm water sharks this year, like the whatever brown sharks Sam, that are Sam, sandbars, sandbars and duskies and, and silkies. Duskies yeah. and stuff. But the couple days that we had some really good tuna fishing, the Makos, ooh, I don't know if it was the same couple Makos, but I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's, there's a few. There's, the Mako population is is becoming more healthy by the yeah. by the, yeah, by, the by the day. Yeah, you close yeah. it long line and you close it commercially. You close some value. You know, you'll see an influx of stuff start to yeah. change, and then you get a a shift. You know, of of all that. Um, yeah. And, and and I see that with my, I, like I said, with my commercial fishing, the fishing is too good, you know, and it's not, yeah. it, it's, you know, I do a lot of bass fishing, a lot of striped bass, bluefish, and when we catch them now, we just, everything's in a mega school, and the same mm -hmm. as our whole, seems like our, our whole entire sport fishing 
from, like you said, from Kate Havers North. When it's good, it's really good. And when it's bad, it's 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 a whole yeah. nother level of bad. Like you can't do anything, no matter what you do, you could spend 24 hours, you're not gonna get a fight. And then when it's good, you just here it comes, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's what's changed our I think fishing. It's not that it's it's just years ago it was just steady, you know. We, and yes, do you think catch- that's do you think that's because maybe because of what what generally the the knowledge of everybody fishing is a little bit better and the pressure when it's good is is unbelievable at least out for ocean city i can like when the tuna fishing is good in ocean city on a on a calm weekend it's unbelievable the amount of boats out there uh, technology is far exceeded fishing yeah yeah and everyone uh is very good at what they do you know, there's uh, obviously it's always been said 10% of us catch 90% of them. But, you know, when they're biting, you know, everyone's maximizing how how good you're you're doing, you know. It's, yeah, because you guys are like on the Canyon Runner seminars, you guys are sharing that knowledge and sharing what to do. So you're, everybody's getting better, you know, just by happenstance, you know. By, yeah. And like, there's more boats. And, and I've always had, I can tell you this, like, and I've done this, I have a lot, a lot of opposition from, people I respect in the industry, like why I always help them. And the only reason why I, I actually help people, and I can tell you this on a pod, is that I was that young kid once. Yeah. And, you know, I had two different uh, people reach out to me this summer and saying, you know, I took my kid out. I took your advice. We caught the best thing ever, you know, best day we ever had. We caught seven tunas. I'm like, oh, sir, that's awesome. You know, and the kid's hooked. I'd much yeah, yeah. rather do that than some kid playing video games, you know, my dad took me fishing all over the place, all over, the, you know, all over the planet. Uh, and that's my something dad, that when I was a kid, know, he went offshore, my, my dad and my uncle, and they didn't take me. And that's what, and I, when I say didn't, I was, got, like, got sad I was like five or six. I was like, I should be out there with them. But I remember them getting back and they didn't know what they're doing. They barely know what they're doing now, but, um, they got back and they caught like a wahoo and a couple of tunas and I was like, man, I missed out on that. <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> but it, it's uh, I'd much rather you know I'll I'll take any kid that wants to go. I mean that's something that's you know pastimes have have changed, hobbies have changed. You know this this yeah. technology and computers and and everything. You know it's just definitely uh, everyone. Wants Do you to think be- I had this conversation the other day or last night with a friend of mine down here? that that is a amateur has a center console is a good friend of mine uh do you think that fishing is a lot cooler than it used to be when we were growing up Oof. like at least the public that, perception of it is yeah the t- tv is has, has not helped yeah. uh, i can tell you this tv has not helped our our industry it's tv uh, and social media as far as yeah i mean like it, it's it, it's not it's much more acceptable to be a guy that fishes and wears the the hook sunglasses and the pelagic stuff and stuff like that you know i mean everyone wants to be a commercial fisherman with grunden every form of grunden's on oh yeah that fucking i I wasn't even i was just talking about instagram and being cool but i i didn't even bring up i totally forgot about the wicked tuna you know but yeah all that stuff is has changed you know i can't get anyone to go commercial fishing with me when you know it's real fishing i call it like when it's northeast 25 and rough and you know, like people, you're gonna you're gonna go today. I go, yeah, we're we're gonna go fishing. It's you know, it's part of it. You can't go. It's not a rainbows and you know a horse and pony show. It's uh, some days are rough, some days it's cold, some days it's miserable. You know, I, I personally don't want to go on a calm day. I don't want to you know sit there on bluebird light and variable. What yes, would I like to be calm, of course, but. I personally like it when it's rough. I, I you know, I, I thrive off other people, you know, struggling, you know, in a bite around me. Uh, and, and that's what makes you a better fisherman overall. Uh, you know, that's always what I was taught, you know, on, on when you can overcome certain experiences, you know, yeah. um, and conditions. And that's what helps you change everything. You know, change your tactics and change how you evaluate everything on your boat. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, uh, 
it's different but do i think fishing's cool i i do like it it it's just it's just different you know everything it's not better it's not worse it's just different i remember like i mean i grew up in a in a fishing oriented town you know um i grew up in a town called oyster bay new york uh it's where billy joel's from i mean it's all clamors lobstermen you know it's where down easter alexa was written uh <laughs> you know all of long island is a very high commercial fishing prevalence um in the industry and sport fishing as well montauk one of the biggest places so, and what's changed a lot area. yeah uh what's changed a lot is that when i was 10 years old i would have killed to go work for some of these guys that i looked up to as like an idol or like a you know like a superhero you know i'm like oh that guy's the man i mean look at all the stuff he catches just by reading magazines there was no computers and yeah. you just saw pictures and and now you know it's like if you're not getting paid just to show up you know <laughs> kid to throw a temper tantrum yeah. you know and and i would have given you know my left arm you know, sometimes in, in high school to go fishing with some of these people free and, and scrub For the sure. boat and do whatever I had to do to get it done. And I remember when I first got a car, I slept in my truck so many nights, you know, just to go fishing with a couple different people and be early and stay late and yeah. and do whatever I got to do to uh, to keep working. I remember a lot of that now. And it's like, you know, now, you know, I can't get, you know, commercial fishing's tough, you know, to get people to work. And you know, I've had, I, I've been, I'm going to say blessed. I've had two really good mates. Uh, I've had Brian Yonkin, who's been with me since I left the canner as 13 years. And I've had Kevin Britton in Florida and yeah. they're both aces. I mean, I'm just very lucky. I got a Florida mate and I have a, a New York mate and it works out both because I don't have to house either one of them with me. Yeah, yeah. Cause you know, we all know how that works. You know, you, you want to kill each other after, uh, you know, you live on the boat for six months, but both guys are aces and I can't always thank them enough. You know, they're always there for me. There's, you know, always a, you know, and we've always compounded off each other, you know, um, they always learn something from your guys, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's a part of our industry. That's, that's definitely dying off. You know, the, you know, learning from the old timers, I, I would say not just old timers, but guys have been doing it a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was definitely, you know, brought up like that. I've had some unbelievable teachers in this industry. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a guy I can't thank enough, Phil Delaney and who ran a canyon runner. Everyone's like, what'd you learn from Phil? I, I said, should, hey. you know, I should literally that maybe one of the pods should be like, the get the, the ghost of canyon runner pass on the pot. Like, like, well, a couple well of I can guys, tell you this, Mike I'm, I'm and gonna, Dean and you, that'd I'm be cool. I'm going to speak on the behalf of Phil. Phil, doesn't have the words to do his podcast. All right. Oh, I'm not. He, utter, he 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 only got to talk at one seminar that we did, and we gave him the mic, and it was like the scene from uh, in Wayne's World when they give Garth the mic, <laughs> yeah. and, and he couldn't even say one word, you know, and uh, you know then he had a lot of one word answers. So we we just moved right along. But it's not just him. You, you learn a lot more. I'm not gonna say about fishing. And I'm sure you've had a lot of good teachers as well. And it's not always about how to take care of the boat and, you know, how to be punctual and stuff that you can't really teach, yeah. you know, and how to be prepared, um, you know. And to this day, everyone, you know, like, obviously, uh, like I said, I learned from Phil, keep a 5 sixteenths nut driver, like, three inches from me or a eleven thirty seconds, which is every hose clamp on a boat. Yeah. I mean that there should be two of them in your tool tray that sits right alongside because you need it about 400,000 times in a year. It's, it's shocking. It is shocking. <laughs> oh. And like, like that was one of the first things he taught me and he burned it into my brain. Yeah. You know, but could, could he tell me, you know, what size hook we were using or, you know, how to, how to fix, you know, what, how to rig this bait. No, absolutely not. He kept that a secret, but yeah. You know, but there's stuff like that that's, you know, generational knowledge that gets passed along um, that that will 
always be in, you know, still in the make. Yeah. So, but no, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely changed a lot. Um, and, and it's, it's some stuff's good. Some stuff's bad. Yeah. You can't, uh, you know, and, and our fishing has changed. Look at the evolution of our fishing now. It's like, you know, Stuart, uh, I'm in Stuart for the winter. And Stuart used to be sailfish capital of the world. Now it's, it's. I'm going to say it's a grind. It's uh, a grind. From what, it's a from grind. What... I, you know, I'll be there starting in a week. And, and I'm planning on fishing about probably 40, 40 to something, 50 days. I'll be fishing. I'll be fishing a lot. And I yeah. grind it out almost every single day to get the bites but you know our sport fishing programs all have changed uh you know the you should be able to go there now it's like you got to go to the pacific you got to get on the ship you got to go yeah to i feel like i'm we're i'm going i get to spend a couple of months in east of Maris, you know and that used to be where all the cool kids went and now if you don't even put your boat on a ship it's like what are you doing you're not even the cool kid anymore. You're, the, yeah. you're, oh, you're I've never been the cool kid. But yeah, yeah, you're you're at the back. You're at the back end now. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like you know, we we did that, and and it's on the greener pastures. And then there'll be, you know, three four years from now, you know, it, it, there'll be something else new that pops up, and um, and some of these other crazy uh, private boat programs that oh my god, over, man. you know, I mean, there's 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 a couple more in the works that are gonna go you know, either on the same places or other places. Yeah, that are just going to be, I mean, look at the influx of the Azores and and and, and how those guys over there have, have, you know, look at all the fish they're catching. And, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a tuna guy. I mean, they run away from the big eyes there. That's all I want to yeah. go go do. Like, what I all I'm saying to myself, geez, what happens when the sun goes down? You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. between 530 and 8 o'clock at night. You know, yeah. like troll 17 inch squid bar, like you know, the probably the videos you can make are probably crazy, you know. Yeah. You know, or if you put a value out or a swimming plug, or who who knows what else lives there. Oh, there's you know? all sorts of stuff, I'm sure. All if, sorts if, of creatures I, that go bump in the night there. I find that if the if there's a giant if there's 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 blue marlin of of decent numbers and size, there's a lot going on to have those blue ones there, you know yeah so tell me all oh, right okay. so we're you we're still you have what i really wanted to get to is what so i troll what, every now, day. the blue no <laughs> yeah. I, I, I i don't care a shit about what you troll every day i want to know <laughs> about the blue marlin fishing that you guys see up there in july and august and the shit that you guys that everybody because everybody's so tuna centric up there what could what you think could actually be done if if you know i know that there's some boats that are up there they go marlin fishing but you know yeah. you know you uh, see you see no 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 offense to anybody in the azores but you see what happens when programs of 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 no budget and with all the technology and the talent in the world get get come there and it it changes people's perspective about the fishery and i think you don't need to go to the azores to see that sort of shit i think you can go huh. up to the uh i think new york with some well, giant super eddy that never moves yeah. July, I mean, on uh, July moon and see that. Yeah. I mean, uh, Brett Jameson, uh, I hope he's listening. He proved that he, I think he caught six or seven blue ones in one day, yeah. uh, up there, you know, on, uh, I remember a guy that was next to me, was just talking to him the other day and, uh, he's actually tied up right on the end there on that freedom boat. And, uh, I remember a, a buddy of mine's like, yeah, a guy caught six blue morons. I'm like, you sure you think it was six? Yeah. Goes no, he said six blue marlins. So then I'm like laughing because I thought it's probably white marlins, you know. But in July, for some reason, on the say the eddy comes in in June. Most of the good eddies come that June 20th. That's when they really hit the edge. I start going hard. Always about June 25th to July 10th. Whenever that eddy settles in for about a week to ten days, then the blue ones show up. It's like, you know, you send the scouts in, which is all skippies and a little yellow fins. And then there's a lot of blue marlins that, that follow them and, and, and a lot of large creatures as well. Uh, yeah. But I think if you put some real trained killers out there, I mean, I know uh, Topher had a, had a couple bang up days. Yeah, on a days. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and he was like a front runner and he, the boat, you know, or, you know, he was uh, offshore me the whole time. I was watching him go in reverse, you know, most of the time. And uh, Richie Barrett, who we had on the pod not too long yeah. ago, uh, Richie was steaming from real, you know, from New Jersey. He, yeah. he calls me all the time and he's like, should I be there? I'm like, yeah, you should be there. You know, <laughs> And uh, here he comes, you know, and, and uh, he's someone that I looked up to growing up. You know, he was always one of those crazy guys and you let someone like those two guys loose and they're going to put, you know, put some numbers up. Yeah. Uh, but I think just the amount of tunas that are around. It small- sounded like you had to go almost, you couldn't go like ding pig fishing like we do in Ocean City. You had to go almost teaser fishing like you would. You, you can't. Or something like that. I, I tried to go do that. You, you're, there's just too much. I, I'm going to call it crap, you know. There's too many mahis. There's just too much stuff that you're just going to get stopped every 10 seconds of the day. Mm-hmm. It's just not. And then some days there's a lot of grass, you know, so you're going to have to just, you know, fish a little bit cleaner and, and, and really tease or fish. And you can't be put in full. The grass has been everyone's enemy the last couple of years. Um, these massive piles, but there's plenty of blue ones, but there's a window, like you said, from, that eddy rolls in, they come in, come off the moon. They're there for, I want to say, two to three weeks, and then it kind of fizzles out for yeah. some reason. I don't it know. It Seems why. like the July moon when, you know, I think it seems like the July moon up there has has been the most consistent when it comes to the marlin fishing. Yeah, um, and or, or, or overall fishing, right? Yeah, and, and like I said, if if it lands somewhere around July fourth in the World Cup. I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've killed two big blue blues. I've killed two over, uh, two over 850 up here. And I would put all in that you could catch the winner here. You know, yeah. unfortunately you have a bad deck stacked against you because you're competing with some guy in the Azores who has way more fishing time in Hawaii, yeah. way more actual fishing time that if you're just dealt a bad wind up here, you're, you're done. You're yeah. already steep. So that's the only downside of that whole thing. But uh, I know Tyler and Drayson, he, he caught the state record. He, he went out and caught an 800 pounder. I mean, Cookie caught an 800 pounder to White Moral Open. Like there's a lot of big ones around. There's some big ones. I've seen a big one. Oh, the Hudson. There, yeah. There's some fish that I've, I've gotten zipped off. You know, you're reeling in yellow fins and, and albacores or whatever. And they just eat them like, like little gumdrops, like the fat kid eating the M&Ms at Christmas, you know, (laughs) they're trying to eat them all at once. He just goes around hoovering them all up and (laughs) they're so big. There's a couple of them. I I watched one eat off my, uh, my boss's son. I watched him suck down a 60 pound elephant. You know, you see all those pictures and with the elephant tail, I I remember I just watched the thing, eat it, ripped off three jumps. Like, no, okay. I'm on to the next boat. Yeah. Uh, And, uh, my buddy CK was right next to me and he goes, do you see that blue one jump? I'm like, yeah, I just hooked them. You know, and he's kind of like the fact that you could see it a half to three quarters of a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. You could see that. It, that's a, a fish of statue. You yeah, know, yeah. that's I've only one, had one uh, person radio over to be my, Oh my, look at that. You know? Yeah. Look at that one, uh, you know, and, and they're all thick, you know, yeah. every single, single one, uh, is size large you know everyone's like epic this and double xl there's some stuff you know and i've i've got killed a lot of things commercial fishing there's some some big animals that roam around up here yeah for sure you know? um and even the longliners tell me they catch a couple real real hogs you know uh, yeah. the guys that were even doing the deep set and he said there's some real big ones around and you know either they suck the tunas right off like a hoover vacuum you know uh right off the line so it, it's something that if more people tried, oh, yeah, I'm sure the results would be unbelievable. But yeah, to be some, super focused on that. For some, that. Reason, it, it, some reason. It's hard. Well, to, no one north of New Jersey gives an absolute crap about catching a marlin. <laughs> Marlin's in, in Z, okay, up here. <laughs> and like we said, there's a black marlin every year for some reason caught because they don't even know the difference between a white, a blue, a black. Maybe that blacks don't live up here. You know, yeah. but nobody cares because if you can't kill it, stamp it, try to sell it illegally, do whatever you can. No one cares about Marlon. 
And, and that's just, unfortunately, the lure of sport fishing, I would say, north in the northern area, I'm going to call it yeah. that, it has, has lost, you know, and that's, and, and I can tell you this, I love killing tunas, but there's nothing cooler catching nice size blue marlins. I yeah. mean, it, grew, it definitely grew in me. I, I caught two back to back big ones this summer and I'm like, wow, that's, you know, when you see a, a 500 pound blue, you know, when I say a 500 pounder, most people will call them 750 yeah. uh, because they're vastly overestimated just like a sea bass is or anything like that. Um, because most people in New York don't see blue marlins, you know, it's a real fish, you know, it's, it's, you know, hundred and something inches long, 120 inches, most of them. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, something that a lot of, a lot of people don't get to see, you know? Yeah. But the people that do actually miraculously catch them, you know, are obviously they're vastly overestimated. <laughs> like every white Marlin up here in New York is 90 pounds. Yeah. Everyone that there's no fifties, <laughs> um, you know, that's, it's pretty comical. Then some people do, you know, not knowing, you know, they bring whites back to the scale and, the reader manager is texting me. He's like, "Oh, we got a white here." And I'm like, "Oh, you know what I mean? It should be." He says it's over a hundred. I'm like, "I would like to see that because yeah. the you know the 500 best guys in the world can be in a white marlin open. Don't catch that." So, <laughs> but but uh, you know the fishing. I, I just hope it keeps the trend that we've we've had. You know, not to sound like a hog. No, you, know, you can you you know you, you know can, like never, well, we've I'm had. Never... It, we we've had the the deck the the shoe that Long Island, Massachusetts, New Jersey has been dealt the last couple of years in the whole is, is unbelievable. You know, it's just better and better. And then one thing is better than then then something else is even better than the year before. And it's just it's crazy, you know, yeah. how uh how and how it changes, you know. But I, I will say this our canyon fishing has slowed way down compared to use what we used to catch because now you, you, the consistency over the season you think? yeah the, the candy fishing's off because all the elephants now and and even the whites and the blues everything's in shore yeah. the water pushes in shore the bait pushes in shore everything is now spread out where we used to just have eddy after eddy so the fish i think used to jump from one eddy to the next mm -hmm. you know through some little sliver of water and we would just chase them down. Um, and that's probably what you guys used to do in Ocean City. The eddies would come oh, down. Yeah. And, and here comes one. All right, when the next batch of fresh water will come, all right, the next guy will go out to catch 10, 11 whites in a day. And then, okay, we get five, six, seven bad days. Then the next eddy would be coming and you jump ahead of that one. And, you know, it would be very good fishing after that. But, yeah, you know, but overall, I, you know, the the fishing in the northeast has has been nothing short of uh of i would say can't say it's unbelievable but as as good as we could possibly ask it to be for the period of time we just have to hope we get the weather yeah because yeah. so far yeah and you know when i tell people when you go traveling oh how far do you go fishing everyone thinks we're out of our mind that you don't even lower the riggers till you're 110 miles no yeah you know and then now we're fishing in beach and hydro and 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 that that's that's all 150 160 and we're pushing our boats to the limits you, you're using every drop of fuel and and obviously fuel isn't cheap so you want to make sure you're you're capitalizing on every single thing you know out there and i want to make sure you know if we're going that far that you know my boss and his guests are getting the most out of it yeah for um, sure you know and when you have a bad trip out there it makes us feel I'm sure you're feeling the same way like so, you got to come home 110 miles. You just want to put your head through the dash. And you're like, oh, that was a bad call. You know? Yeah. And, and we all have that. And you know, right when you get there, some days. No, it's it, amazing it how quickly you know how, how quickly you, you look. Fucked, you look at the water. You fucked up. Yep. You're like, wow, I, I'm a fucking loser today. Yeah, and and you know, just... you you just, you're going to try to battle, but it, it's, a, it's a thing of quicksand. And you, you try harder and then you spiral into this fucking saw movie disaster, you know, yeah. that you're getting locked up and you, you can't, no matter what you do, you can't 
fucking change that, yeah. you know? Um, but that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what's been going on in the Northeast. You know, it's, it's been blue fins, yellow fins, you know, and hopefully we have another, another good year. And obviously the weather has changed a lot. You know, we used to have generally calm summers. This summer was not calm by no means. I mean, I'm sure the whole coast saw it was rougher than, than normal. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't help the fishing as well, but um, because you can't stay on. Yeah. So cool man i appreciate it it was fun good to see you yeah see you buddy over there i can't see yeah at least my boat's there it's good i'll be Everything. we'll be back i'll be back down after christmas so maybe if you're you're down here right after the holiday before we leave yeah, yeah. Love to see I'll, you. Uh, I'll be sure to sweat be sure to come on by and and uh if anyone has any questions uh you can always reach out to me my email is mark at broadbill.com and uh I wish Nick was here so I could just uh Yeah, I wanna have the text him hang on to see what he called. I wonder if these I wonder if they're still tailing it, it pitch yeah. dark, you know. Um but you know, he's a busy guy and this is his time of year. And yeah. you know, it's just like asking you and I to try to do something in July. That is not yes. even in the cards. I wouldn't even entertain that. So um but Overall, uh, it was good seeing you and uh, Thanks, brother, I appreciate and, uh, it. All's well, and and all goes well with the new venture. And hopefully, get out with you one day. And hopefully, uh, yeah, this treats you well for so. sure, buddy. Thank you. All right.